Back once again with Stephen Poacher, uh, down minor football coach and former Carlo uh, football coach. We're going to talk about the um, the importance of transition. So obviously teams will set up, try and turn teams over and move it into attack as well. So can you talk to me about how teams transition? Because it's obviously a very, very important part of the game. Yeah, listen, Shane, there's no doubt about it. And, and for me, you know, transition play, people, I was running a coaching course a couple of years ago, actually down in Scaries and, uh, I was running on, on offensive transition play, and I remember at the time a, a few a few pundits had a little bit of a nibble at it, and they found this word transition hilarious. And the amount of times I'd made reference to it, and Dublin don't transition. I think one of them quoted in the paper as saying Dublin don't transition. What's well, actually it, it break my weekend reading that, but uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, transition is not a new word, Shane. It's not a new word. It's it's a word that's existed for 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 as long as we can remember. It's in every sport. Transition is the ability to move from one place to another, you know, and all that simply is doing, it works two ways, Shane. It's, it works from, you transition from defence to attack, but you also transition from attack to defence. And you've got to train both in training. And I would have set up a number of games. A lot of our training, 80, 90% of the training we would have done in Carlo would have revolved around a score. And, and, and still, 80, 90% of the training I would do would end with a score because that's ultimately what you want to do. But then it restarts again with, Defence, you know, so you score and then you defend straight away. Because for me, transition is not a physical thing, Shane. It's a mental thing. The mindset switch that when you lose the ball, you need to know everybody is now a defender. So when you lose the ball, 13, 14 and 15, you set the tone. And if you look at Dublin, you know, and, and we refer to Dublin quite a bit. People always say to me, why do you refer to Dublin? Even club teams will say to me, why do you refer to Dublin? But for me, they're not county players. They're club players first and foremost. Their club players put into a county setup just like you or, or me or, or him or whatever. So you're trying to explain to lads, these aren't super human beings. These are normal lads like you or me or him. So you're trying to get them on that level of thinking that if they can do this, we can strive to do it. But if you look at them, Shane, Dean Rock, Kieran Kilkenny, Paul Manuel, you'll find them backtracking back, putting the tackle in. I, I think there was a video clip floating about Ray Boyne on Twitter, is a great guy for putting clips up and there's a clip floating about there after a while of, of I think it was Kilkenny or somebody came back and made a block on his own six-yard box, you know, and, and that that comes from a, from, a, from a mental perspective that when we lose the ball, I'm wanting to get this back, you know, and and I think that's important. So if you're going to coach this, Shane, it has to be coached in every single training session you do. You have to be implementing a little form of transition play. So how do you implement it? Well, very, very straightforward. If you run a, a game that you're attacking one goal into. Run that game, but then as soon as that game is over, have the goalkeeper kicking a ball out so that the five or six forwards who attack that goal are now switched on and pressing that kick out. You know, and it changes their mindset on how they transition. But for me, seeing a big thing now in modern day football, and I'll show it on the board in a second, is following your run. You know, a lot of top teams are now what I call following their runs out. And the Sunday game was a great example a number of weeks ago where Monaghan played Tyrone, and you can hear the Monaghan bench roaring at Carl O'Connell. Finish your run, Carl! Finish your run, Carl! The camera's just above the dugout, and you can hear those little things. And you'll see the Dublins, the Mayos, the Kerrys, and the Monaghan's. But one of the reasons, and Tyrone, but one of the reasons these teams can do that, Shane, is because they've got the athleticism to do it. Lesser counties might not have the physical condition to do that, or to follow the runs out. So it's very, very important that, you know, you try and coach this as well. So I would run a number of drills now in games in training where if a half-back attacks, he leaves the play and he finishes his run out and hits the end line before he joins the play again. Just to encourage that mindset of get in behind the opposition's defence. Get in behind them, stretch them. So I'll show you here now. So if you have a team set up, this is your defence. So if you're set up defensively, okay, and you've left three up, for example, okay, and you turn a team over, your right half-back is sitting in here and he turns the team over, okay? So five has just turned the team over. He's got 10 alongside him and he's got eight alongside him. What you find in lesser sides is five will break on his own. No one else. He will break down the field and they're happy to sit in the armchair, as I call it. Okay. And if you look back in your defense and you see six or seven guys standing idle, they're not doing their job. You know, so five turns the ball over. And what you'll find in the really good teams is, <coughs> excuse me, five will turn the ball over. 12 will go, 8 will go, 11 will go. All of a sudden, 
you will have a cavalry of runners going saying, now, five has got the ball, he might lay it off to 12. Eight might just keep going, you know. The other man, 12, might just keep going, okay. And what, you, what you've done there is you've pulled opposition players out of their defence, okay. You've created spaces in here, all right. But you also give the man in the ball options because he's got a number of runners, you know. And the really good team, Shane, can transition from defence to attack very quickly. So if you go back to if you go back to the All Ireland final of what we were talking about, say the say the Tyrone the Tyrone Dublin game, that's the Dublin forward line, okay? When they when they filtered everyone back, they turned Tyrone over. Oh, and Merkin was standing here. I think it was Merkin. I'm not too sure. I think it might have been Merkin. The video shows him. The clip shows him. He's like a hundred meter sprinter. You can nearly see the veins in his neck. He's running that bloody hard, but he's gone. He's not worried about the ball. He is gone. He has followed his run out. He actually ends up setting the attack up but four or five passes later. He's in here setting up a score, you know, because he followed his run. But in a, in a lesser side, ball turned over, cornerback, I'm happy. I'm staying there. Job's done. Somebody else can do that. You know, so it's it's having that trigger, Shane, that switch. Bang, ball's turned over, go. You know, numbers. Runners, runners. Is it something difficult to coach into a side that, that transition or does it take time? It takes a lot of time. And, and like for three years, we were working at the Carlo lads. Like, like my first year with Carlo 2017, we got a lot of criticism for the way we played against Dublin and Monaghan because the games were obviously exposed live on TV. And you were looking at it and you were thinking, defensively, we were okay. Like we always, we always had this philosophy. If after 15 minutes, we always broke the, broke the game into four quarters. So after 17 and a half minutes of the first half, we want to be in the game. Okay. And the only two occasions bloody still eats at me. The only two occasions we weren't in the game over the whole three years was Leash on, on two occasions. The, the National League final and the semi-final. And it still haunts me and it annoys me. And, you know, I think it was a... I, I don't think it was a tactical thing from Leash. I don't think it was that they were any better than us. Like, we, 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 we had 13 missed chances in the National League final. We had five clear goal score chances. We retained 100% of our kickouts. It was a psychological thing, Shane, for our lads. They'd never beaten Leash ever in their history. There was an inferiority complex in Carlo over Leash. I don't know why, but there was. And they they knew them all. And they probably just didn't have that same mentality, that same edge, you know. And it disappointed me because, for me, there's no friends in football. There's friends out of football. When you cross that white line, you do anything you can to win the game, you know. And, you know, for me, we, did, we just didn't have that same edge that we had playing a Limerick or a Waterford or a Louth. We didn't have that same edge. But the following year, so 2017 was about just putting the template in place. And 2018, when we reached those great heights in 2018, our transition play was outstanding. You know, we, we had scored, we, we had a plus 35 score difference in the National League that year. But those games weren't live on TV because they weren't fashionable games. We were blowing teams out of the water. We were averaging 213, 214 a game. Now, the previous year, we weren't. The previous year, we were keeping our scores down, our opposition scores down, and we were competitive. But the following year, we were adding that little offensive end to our game scene. And I have some great clips that I can send you, actually, of, of our transition play, how he broke, how he broke the numbers, how he walked balls into the net at times. You know, it was a joy to watch. Like in the two championship games against Kildare and Louth, we averaged something like I think it was two seventeen and two eleven, like four four what was it four twenty eight or four twenty nine in two championship games against the Division Two team and the Division One team. Like that's that's mental. It's unheard of. You know, whereas the previous year against Monaghan and Dublin, you're only averaging maybe fifteen points over the two games. You know, or, or sixteen points. So. It was it, it stages it stages now, you know. For me, the third year was was hard to judge because we lost Paul Godrick for six out of seven national league games. Like that's like you know, for Carlo, it's monumental loss because you know, like he scored three, I don't know what it was three seventy three the year before, and you're taking three seventy three out of your team, 80 percent of your scores. Because see, we had a play, we had a play that a lot of teams didn't understand. We had Jordan Morrissey, who, who is playing midfield for DCU this year when they won the Sigerson. Jordan's going to be a great kid. Uh, very close to going to Australia last year. Marty Clark said he was so unlucky not to get a contract. And Jordy's the sort of lad who would love to go and, and broaden his horizons and give the pro game a, a go. But Jordy's going to be a special talent. If he keeps his feet in the ground, keeps working hard, you know, and, and just doesn't get ahead of himself, he'll be a great talent. And for me, Jordan is a midfielder, but... He wasn't ready for midfield last year or 2018. So what we done was we played him at right half back and we played Sean Gannon in front of him at wing forward. So we had two very good footballers 
who played for the same club, who had a great understanding coming off the right-hand side at pace. So what would have happened was them two would have done one of two things. They would have created scores or they would have got fouled. Or they, or, they, sorry, they would have created or, or got scores or they would have got fouled. But they were getting fouled on the side of the field we wanted them to get fouled on, which was Bradrick's side. So he was a left-footed free taker, so we would have scored a lot. Of, so people said, oh, Carlo, live off freeze. But Carlo had earned that free. Carlo had to had work a scoring chance to actually create a situation where you were fouled, you know. So it was a play that we had and a play that we would have used quite a bit. And I don't think many teams caught on it, but Tyrone did catch on it. Tyrone were one of the very few teams that caught on it. They knew what we were doing. They were putting pressure. They were cute that day. The hers. They were putting pressure on the referee. And Gannon loves a free. They were shouting and they were calling, Gannon loves a free, you know. And we bits of that there. And, and, you know, but listen, it's all part of the game. It's the gamesmanship. And you understand you do what you can to win. But, uh, you know, there was a cuteness about them. And they, they had sort of sussed that out. They'd worked that out that, that we were doing quite a bit of that, you know. And funny that day, they restricted Paul's freeze to to an enormous distance from goal, you know, which was which was great management, great coaching, great, great, great tactical play by them as well, you know. But um, no, no. So, you know, as I said, you know, those first two seasons, we were making progress on the transition element. And, and seeing, you could ask any of the players, we religiously ran transition games and training, transition games from the middle third to the goals, from the middle third to the goals. There was a portable goal in the middle of the field. We had a portable goal in the middle of the field. We had the big goals. 5v5, 6v6, and then the same coming out. So they attacked and then they defended. And it always ended with a score. It always ended with a score. We'll do uh, attacking setups in our next video. But just a quick final question on the transition. So let, let's say, for example, coming out of um, the half back line or somewhere like that, Sean Gannon is picking up the ball. And I'm on his shoulder. I'm the wing back. I'm Jordy Morrissey. Am I running with purpose or am I just going as fast as I can, either to be coming off his shoulder or getting ahead of him? Or do I actually have a plan in terms of where I want to go to try and expose the opposition? Do you, do you think on those terms in terms... I'm not just transitioning to get forward. I'm doing it to get to a certain area. Absolutely, Shane. I think one of the key things is angled runs. People are very dismissive of a simple drill. A simple drill you do at training, and it's a three-man weave. But what the three-man weave does, and, and I, I would do a bit of three-man weaves, four-man weaves, but I would do it with a bit of a difference. I would have an extra pass at the end for a late runner. So I would have a coach standing to the side, so they might make the weave, and then a late runner might roll around the cordon of the weave and take a quick pass off a coach just to encourage that extra run. But what a weave does is it gives you the angle runs. So if you're coming out of defence of the ball, this is the ball carrier. Here's your two runners. If he's coming across him at pace, he's coming across him at pace, he's taking the ball here, he's coming across him at pace, and he's taking the ball. But if you're going in a straight line, Shane, that's very easy to defend against. So what you're trying to encourage is angle runs off the shoulder. Now, it's very difficult, and it's not easy to do, but if you run those games... We would have run a lot of 3v1 games. We would have broken the field into three segments. 3v1, 3v1, 3v1. <laughs> working our goalkeepers as well. Working on our conditioning, but also working on the quality of the pass. And the pass is so important. And again, it goes back to the top teams. The top teams do the simple things so well. That simple pass, Shane, the chest. Making, I call it the presentation of the pass. You present the pass to the man in the right manner. What will happen when you go down the food chain a little bit, Passes will go to the bottom. Passes will take a bounce. Passes are up here. And it's not that the players aren't capable of doing it. It's a concentration thing. It's an execution thing. You heard Jim Gavin. And people used to turn their nose up at him when he talked about the execution of our skill. And, and I used to listen intently to his interviews because there's always something that you can pick out of it. And obviously he didn't give much away. He wasn't going to tell any stories about boys playing poker naked or anything on team bottom weekends like, that people wanted to hear. I don't know what people wanted to hear. like, But, you know, the, the, the bottom line was he was giving enough away. Our execution of our skill wasn't good enough today. And when you watch the game back, the execution probably wasn't at the levels that they expected, you know. And that's the high standards you set, Shane. And that's the high standards I always set with the lads down the road. Like, the boys probably thought I was a hard taskmaster at times. They were probably sick listening to me. But if the pass wasn't executed in the warm-up in the right manner, I would have went bananas, you know. Like, lads, we're an inter-county team, you know. Up the levels here, you know. But to be fair to the guys, like, the, the progress you could make. And to be honest with you, I couldn't fault them because... Any sessions we had, like the quality was always really high and it was always top class. And, and I think back to that goal, for me, it was the perfect goal against Kildare when they were pressing us full in injury time and we worked the ball out. There wasn't one single pass didn't go to chest. There wasn't one single pass that wasn't presented to the man in the right manner. And that's the reward you get when you do things like that, you know. 
But you're talking about the runners coming. You, you're, you're looking situations, Shane, in games. You're looking for little overloads in games. And what you want to try and create is little 3v1, 2v1, 4v2 situations. And if you can create those little overloads coming out of the fence, if you can create those little overloads in the middle third, and if you can create those little overloads in your forward line, you're going to create scores. You know, well, you know that's, and, that's, that's, and important. that's important. One other question I'd have with you, or for you with that is, if I'm the, the man, the ball carrier, coming out of defence in transition, are you encouraging me to run to space? Or are you almost re- uh, encouraging me to run directly at an opposition man to sort of draw him and create that two-on-one a bit sooner? Yes, I understand what you're saying. So if you're coming out of defence with the ball, so what you want to do is, like I, I had a little game and, and uh, the boys used to, underage game every game should have a name you know for me like it has to have a purpose you know so I, I was running the I was running the coaching day a uh, number of coaching days on transition play and this week game called Blast Off you know and everybody used to laugh at it but I actually got the idea from Peter Donnelly believe it or not in Tyrone when Peter Donnelly was at uh, he was up in Ballyholden one day doing a session and then I had him in, in St. Clemens in Kilkeel doing a session but the wee Blast Off transition game so I'll, I'll show you what it meant by it right I'll show you, and it was a great it was a great little game Shane for uh, working, working on breaking out, right? So you had a little setup. Say you had eight players. Well, many of you got there. We've got we're more than eight. We've ten. So you have ten players, okay? And you have eight forwards attacking against them. So who are you giving the advantage to? You're giving it to the defenders, right? So nine times out of ten, the eight forwards should never break the ten down. Does that make sense? Yeah. So whenever they win the ball, as soon as they win the ball, like a firework exploding, you want them to blast off, right? So you want them to go, 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 anywhere, everywhere, right? So you're giving the man and the ball options left, options right. You know, and that's just starting the basics. Now, getting guys to run a specific way, specific patterns of running, specific channels, I don't think even the top teams do that because if you look at the All-Ireland final, the Owen Merkin run, he just takes off. He just goes. But what he does by going, Shane, it's very, very straightforward. When he goes... He occupies the vision and the line of sight of an opposition defender. So the defender who was here turns and follows him. The sweeper who's here might see him and might just get occupied and move five yards across. And that leaves pockets of space for other people to to occupy. So I always say to the young lads in school, lads, vacate the space and occupy. You know, do two things. You vacate your own space, occupy some other space. And that's all you're trying to get young lads to do, Shane, and and if you're, but this is the odd thing too as well. It's very important to mention this. We're talking about coaching at the highest level, right? I'm not. I'm talking about coaching at the underage level. This is the sort of stuff we should be starting to implement. In, and not under 10s or under 12s. But this is the sort of thing we should be starting to talk. This is the sort of thing that I would talk to our senior kids about in school. You know, when we win the ball, I bring this tactic board in and the lads in the PE department give me stick. Oh, there's, you know, and, and I came in one day and they had everybody back in the glasses. There's your tactics there, you know, and they were slagging me. But but on a, seri- on a serious note, I would take the board into school and I would say to the young lads, this is what I want you to do. Young lads need a visual. You know, they need, they need to see what they're doing. And I would say to the centre half forward, use the 45 as a train track. So make your runs across the line. So if you're making ladder runs, the man coming out with the ball, if you make a ladder run, he can kick the ball to you. It's not just a running game. You know, and when you're in this area here, lads, make the decision, do you run it or do you kick it? And that's the key decision when you're transitioning, Shane. Do you run the ball or do you kick the ball? There's two patterns of offensive play, which we're going to look at now in a minute. You either run the ball or you kick the ball. And in transition, you've got to make that decision. 